Hi everybody. Today I'm going to walk you through a really fun technique called cyanotype. It's a uh, very early photographic technique that you can do at home with just minimal equipment and minimal cost. So uh, here we go. So here are a couple of examples of what cyanotypes can look like. Um, some people also know these as photograms. Um, cyanotyping is a photo negative technique where um, a object or a transparency is laid on the surface that has been painted with the photo emulsion and then it's put into the sun and exposed for a various amounts of time depending on how bright the sun is and the quality of the transparency or objects. So um, this is the way that I was introduced to uh, cyanotypes. I'm sorry about the the wiggliness here. Um, I was introduced to them through an artist named Man Ray and his Rayographs. Man Ray is a, or was a surrealist uh, and Dadaist, and was very into these because of the playfulness of them and the nature of chance that came into play as they were being produced. You really can't uh, determine, predetermine the way that these things are going to look, and they have a really lovely sense of uh, history and ambiguity to them. Um, on the other end of things, you can still use these uh, with photo negatives to create some really wonderfully clear and uh, beautiful uh, photographic imagery. This is a picture that I took um, a, a year or two ago with uh, my daughter and our then new puppy as they were taking an, a nap together. Um, and uh, this was produced from a the photograph... Uh, taken into Photoshop and made into a photo negative um, with the, the white balance and stuff shifted and then printed out onto a regular transparency paper through the, the inkjet printer. And, um, and then these forms here are some flower forms from the garden that were laid on top in this way, like laying objects on top of it. So I was playing around with trying to get the best of both worlds. Um, many of your phone apps will allow you to produce photo negatives as well as uh, a lot of the, the uh, pre-installed photo manipulating uh, tools that are on your computer or laptop or whatever. So it's an easy thing to do, but um, the thing to remember is that the technique is a photo negative technique. So um, this is a transparency paper here. Um, that I've been trying to mess around with. This is a uh, science-based um, uh, image. Uh, and in any case, it um, where the black is in the cyanotype, the black is white and the white is black. The sun sets the, uh, the cyanotype blue into the paper. So um, again, that's just something to reinforce as you play around with it. Um, the stuff that you'll need, so let's go through what you're, what you're going to need in order to do this. Um, this is a two-part cyanotype uh, mixture, part A and part B, um, that um, is made by the company Jacquard. And I got these from Dick Blick. Um, they're very inexpensive. Um, what you do is you mix... These come in a powder in here, you fill it up with water, shake it up, let it set for 24 hours, which I did yesterday, um, and then uh, you mix equal parts A and B together, and then paint them onto the paper, let that dry, that becomes your uh, substrate for whatever you're going to play around with, and then uh, you expose it in the sun, I'll walk through all of that here in a few minutes. This is really inexpensive, and um, I've had great success with Jacquard's product. There are several others on the market, and it's and it, again, it's really inexpensive. The other thing that you'll need is a couple of baths of water to um, uh, expose, or not expose, but uh, wash out and solidify, oxidize the image onto the paper after it's been exposed to the sun. A little bit of hydrogen peroxide is not critical or necessary, but it does help speed up the process a little bit. I'm going to walk you through that. You also need some paper to paint the cyanotype onto. Um, I just, these are remnants of old papers that I've used for other printmaking techniques. 
Um, it does need to be a rather durable paper uh, so that it doesn't fall apart as it's being uh, put in, painted and put into the bath and all of that. So um, these uh, card stocks work. This is etching paper. Watercolor paper will work. Also, this is an Unryu mulberry paper, um, a very durable, commonly known as rice paper. It works super well, too, and is really beautiful. Um, and I have begun experimenting with using silk uh, uh, and jacquard. This company does sell silk for this purpose. This is a silk scarf, and uh, it exposes pretty well, too, although I'm still working with it. I want to get this technique down. Um, I make a, a bunch of silk scarves for gifts and uh, all of that. The other thing that you'll need, finally, is a piece of glass or plexiglass. Some people prefer glass. They say it's clearer, you get a better exposure from it, and a backing. And so these, these are basically an uh, old picture frame that I took apart. This is a piece of, of hardboard backing. And I'll show you all of that when I walk through a demo here in just a minute. Back with you in a second. All right, so um, yeah, as you can see, it's much darker in here. So I'm going to uh, prepare some of this mixture and then paint it onto the paper. And this needs to be done in a dark place. I mean, it doesn't have to be like a photo dark room by any means. You could do it in your bathroom or in this case in my studio with almost all of the light shut out and I've got more light in here than I actually need to see but I need to let you see it so um, I think it's going to work anyway. This stuff is pretty forgiving and so um, I'm going to take and shake this. It's got to be shaken up really really well so this is part A um, and uh, Use this souffle cup here. There's part A, a little bit of alchemy here. Not chemistry, alchemy. Alchemy is much more fun than chemistry, which I almost failed in high school. Part B, together they make a, a beautiful dark color to paint on. And uh, mix these together pretty well. I'm going to paint them on uh, one of these, uh, each of these sheets of paper. So I've got, uh, this is known as French paper. It's really good, uh, 140 pound, almost cardstock. Um, and of course, some of the, the Unryu mulberry paper there. I'm also going to uh, try it over this watercolor that I've done earlier. I made this uh, for a previous demo. And what I want to see is if, how much of this is going to lift, how much of the cyanotype is going to lift that color and how much it's going to hold these other colors uh, as it's uh, processed through this technique. We'll see. May just suck altogether, but um, I, uh, I'm feeling very experimental right now, so that's what, that's what I'm going to be up to here. I'm going to take a soft brush. You could use a foam brush uh, and ooh, spill it all over the place. Uh, paint this on. Nice um, layer here where it's uh, rather generous. Um, I found that it doesn't really matter how much I could saturate this on here with. Um, there is a little bit of a difference, and that depends sometimes on the, the difference in the way that it ends up looking after it's exposed. Um, but that also depends on the kind of paper you use that changes things as well. So there is that. It's that simple. I'm going to let that dry, give that a minute to dry here, uh, get it into this paper as well. Um, this soaks up much less of the material. Um, if you're going to play around with this on fabric, I've, I've had uh, students in the past who have tried to uh, do this on t-shirts and with some success. Um, that uh, would take some experimentation to get uh, to work, I think, but it could work just like the silk does. Um, there's this piece here. Um, and finally, let's see if I can get this to work. I don't want to jack too much around with this and lift that watercolor out. But... That's looking pretty cool. Now, these sheets have to dry fully. 
I usually give them 24 hours to dry before they're usable. So I'm going to put them in my, my closet right here where it's really, really dark so they, they don't get any light exposure. The uh, thing about this, once I've mixed this up, I have um, 12 to 24 hours maybe to use this to apply it to some paper before uh, it goes bad. So I'm going to use the rest of this up. won't bore you with that. Um, and what I have uh, here, uh, I have a, um, sorry about that, chaos, uh, this light proof black folder that I've made uh, to store paper that I've previously prepared in here. And uh, I'm going to grab a sheet of that now to do a demo with. So I prepared this last year and it still works just fine. Um, this is some old... Uh, student grade printmaking paper. I think that it is uh, Canson Editions. Uh, feels like that anyway. And it works super well for this. So once these dry, I'm going to put them in here and we'll be able to use them later. So I'm going to put these in the closet and be back with you here in a second. All right, so um, let's make a photogram here. Um, I've got a piece of paper. This has been done before and dried just like that other uh, material that I just prepared will be tomorrow. Um, I've got my uh, plexiglass set up here and the backing. I'm going to lay this uh, on here very simply and uh, begin to lay out uh, a variety of things just to demonstrate for you what's possible. So uh, some fun things to play around with are uh, these are templates. I know it's hard to see here in the dark, but these are, uh, I'll show you two of them when the lights are back on later after we develop this. Uh, these are just some blue plastic letter templates that um, I'm just going to throw on here. Let's see, let's put that one there. Make a good composition. Um, these are some, I think this is echinacea or not. Um, anyway, it's uh, from my wife's herb garden. I picked these yesterday and we've been playing around with them. Um, and here are some more stuff like that. Um, this is some screen from an old screen, that, uh, window screen that fell apart. Um, let's see. Um, bubble wrap. I've never used that before. I want to see what that looks like. This is all about light penetrating and not penetrating. So anything that masks the light is going to show up white or kind of white if it's semi-transparent. Uh, this is a cutout I did of an etching I had done uh, years ago of a, of a wasp. I have a lot of terrible wasps around here. So I'm going to throw this wasp uh, in here to get some of that going. This is an actual wasp nest. I don't know if you can see that. I took a bread knife too and cut the front of it off to get that uh, beautiful waspy, uh, nesty pattern. Lay that there. See what that does. And let's see. Um, here is a dried up dandelion plant. And, oh, that's going to look good right there, I think. Get a little bit more of a plant structure down here at the bottom. Don't want to isolate anything. Take that right there. Mobetta repetition. Anyway, okay, that's enough jacking around with that. Okay, so let's uh, pretend this is it. Um, and I'm going to lay my glass over the top, squish it all down so it makes contact. Put some uh, clips to hold this all together so it doesn't fall apart as much as possible. Hold things together. And uh, now I'm going to take it outside 
and expose it to the sun. Today is nowhere near as bright as it was yesterday. So it's kind of over, overcast and cloudy. So I need to leave it out there longer. I'm going to leave this out there probably for an hour or so. And then um, I'll, uh, I'll bring it back in and, and wash it and uh, see what it looks like. So I'll get back with you at that point. Okay, while that's out in the sun, I want to uh, go over a, a few things, do some critiquing of some of the experiments I've done in the past day or two. Uh, first of all, when you set your project out in the sun, you want it to set um, perpendicular to the sun. You want the sun shining directly into the, uh, the project. So the way that I do that is look at how the, the shadow is casting. I don't want the sun coming obliquely from the side or to lay it flat unless I'm doing some other kinds of experimentation with it, that is. But mostly I want that to get the direct sun on there. I want as much of that exposure as possible. So keep that in mind. Um, this I put out yesterday. This has been sitting out in the sun for about 24 hours now. And um, what I have done with it, let me see if I can get a good shot of this. Here we go. Not really. Get a glare. I spent laid my uh, templates out here in this case and then I spritzed it with water hoping to get the um, the emulsion to break up a little bit and it causes these um, I don't know whether they're I don't know what ha is happening chemically so let's just say that it's magic but it magically causes this discoloration and uh, I'll expose this in a second develop this in a second sorry and see what it actually looks like um, before I do that, though, just a, a quick hit on some of these previous experiments. So um, this has turned out pretty... There's some promising things about this, and it doesn't work well. But I will say this. For me, what uh, I'm going... When I get great uh, pictograph, pictograms, sorry, I'm going to keep them. I love, I love the way they look. The other ones I'm not going to throw out. I'm going to use them to uh, screen print on or do lithographs on top of, combination hybrid prints, or I'll cut them apart and use them as part of collages or draw into them. They're great uh, surfaces to start other projects in So, because they're such a beautiful color with a, a wide variety uh, of value here. Anyway, this is, I've been thinking about work a lot because uh, during our um, stay-at-home orders, uh, uh, work has been on my mind. What does work mean? Um, what, what work is valuable? What should I be doing anyway? So I cut out some of those templates in, into the word work and put them down to see what um, they would look like in combination with these transparent um, triangles that I have uh, for doing other projects with. And they turned out pretty cool. There's a lot to learn from this a lot that I'm going to keep. It's not readable, so you can't see the work. The K down here, W-O-R-K, is uh, hidden. So I tried to do another one. Let's see, this one here, um, W-O-R-K, so it would be more legible. What I didn't realize, and this is pretty funny, is that the interior shape of this triangle looks like a D, so instead of work, this actually says dork, which is pretty cool. And so in future ones, I'm going to make one. I want to make one that says word and work at the same time, so you got the W. Anyway, it's uh, got to be careful about that. Uh, am I right, typographers? Um, here is an example of, of where I've taken and spritzed that paper and you get this beautiful discoloration, uh, letting it set out and really super overexposed, something that I definitely want to play around with later. This is all over, not the greatest of compositions. I'll probably end up using this as a part of a collage uh, later on. This is um, a five-layer screen print over the top of a cyanotype that I did earlier. And so... Let's see that all alone. Um, the reason I like it, this uh, screen print was done using stencils, which gives you a bunch of hard edges. And that background of the open, open value, dark uh, value of that cyanotype, I think uh, created a really beautiful um, uh, arrangement. 
Um, and I'll probably come back to this later uh, in a more serious manner. This was an epic failure. Um, you can kind of see up here where the circle uh, happens. And what I was doing was, let me grab this real quick. I was using this uh, glass that um, I think uh, my wife got from her grandmother. Anyway, I'm not sure where it came from. It was out in the storage shed. I was like, oh, that glass is going to refract the light in a really cool way. And I think that it could be successful, but I left it, I think I left it out in the sun too long, so I'll come back and play with that. Um, that is uh, that um, other uh, transparency material that I was talking about earlier. And what I did with this was I accidentally put it in the peroxide bath first, which jacked up the, um, arrange, the, uh, the uh, way that it was uh, finished up, made this, uh, washed out the whites. So I'll come back and play around with that. Again, use that for a um, collage piece later on. Um, this is that uh, photo piece um, of, of uh, my daughter and her dog. And what I did to get to here, and this is where I am not a photographer, I, my, my friend Forrest Zerbe, shout out to Forrest. Um, if you take a, a, a lessons in doing this from a photographer, you're going to do it in a much more technical fashion. And so this is another version of that where the exposure is all messed up and I flipped the, the um, transparency so she's looking the other way. Um, but you can see this line right here where this is darker than this. What I was doing was trying to gauge the time that I needed to leave this outside to get the best visual quality of the exposure. So um, the longer it's left out, the darker it gets and can overexpose. Um, and so I was uh, using a, a, a white piece of paper to leave it out for a certain amount of time and then move it and leave it out more and move it, uh, timed exposure it to see how, uh, what time it would be need, needed to be uh, exposed for optimum visual uh, recognition. Let's see, we talked about that and that and that. Okay. All right. Back to you and we'll expose some stuff. All right, let's see what this looks like. I'm using my, oh, by the way, I'm using my, my words wrong here. Um, exposes in the sun. I'm going to process it here and see, see what this looks like. And I've got one water bath, pure water, room temperature. I'm going to wash this out in. And one bath, I'm going to put add just uh, a cap full of hydrogen peroxide in it. And this uh, helps to finish and oxidize the uh, chemical process of the technique. Um, and uh, so this is so easy and fun. So let me take this apart. Tape those down so they wouldn't move. And so here, this is. Whoa, before I give, put it in the, the wash bath, the water bath, I'm going to leave it in here for three to five minutes and uh, then take it out, rinse it off, uh, put it in the hydrogen peroxide bath for just a second or two, take it out and rinse it back off with water and then let it dry. So let's see what this looks like. So this has been sitting in the bath for a few minutes while I paused it, and um, looking pretty sweet. You can see, whoa, see that there. Aha, there it is. I think I'm going to leave it in there for just a little bit longer in just the plain water, and let this wash out, um, and uh, then uh, see what happens. I'll get back with you. Okay, I think that it's time to take this out. Um, it's looking pretty sweet. The, as you can see, the water itself has become discolored as the chemical uh, that has washed back out of it. So I'm gonna take it from this bath and, and um, put it just for a second into the one with just a cap of hydrogen peroxide in it. And you'll see that it instantly 
darkens up and um, fixes, sort so to speak, the image almost instantly. Leave it in there for a second. Oh, now it's going. Let's see and try and get this front of the camera. Whoa, sorry about that real quick. All right. Cool. So uh, here you can see how that spritzing and overexposure for a day out in the sunlight has left this with a um, wider variety of color, really chaotic, and uh, still getting in, into that beautiful deep cyan color. I'm going to uh, set this outside and let it dry. And um, then um, it's nearly time, I think, to get my uh, previous demo back in here to expose it. So I'll go check on that and uh, come back. All right, so just a, a few points conceptually about this. I got I to gotta come back to this because I'm pretty excited about it. So thinking about work, right? Everybody's not at work right now during the coronavirus, um, or most people aren't, unfortunately. So thinking about work and all different layers of work. There's the kind of work where you, that you do where you've got some shitty ass job that you, you know, have to go to to make ends meet that steals your soul. There's the the work that you do in in your relationships to make things better, and there's the work that you do that that um, that gets into the messiness of life, and and helps uh, bring uh, maybe joy and creativity and livens your heart. And this. This image is maybe pointing in that direction. I, I've got more uh, more of this kind of work to do on it, more of this, this sacred play work combination. But um, I'm pretty happy with where it's going. Back to you in a minute. All right, so that demo I made is taking forever to expose out there in this uh, overcast, cloudy day. I need to leave it out there for a couple of hours, and I'm really want to close out this demo video. What you're looking for when the um, uh, exposure is happening in the sun is that the color of the cyanotype um, that's painted onto the paper turns to sort of a bronzy, uh, dark golden bronzy color. It's, it's quite beautiful in, in that process as the sun hits it. So it's going to take a little bit. What I'm going to do, though, is um, develop, uh, process this image that, again, like the other one, has been out there since yesterday morning. This one is of um, some plant forms and stuff, though. So I'm going to lift it up and try and get a good visual of it here. Um, so I've got a bunch of plant forms, and um, I'm really excited about like that right there. That's mica from a local mica mine. Uh, and, uh, of course, it is semi-transparent. I've, I've flaked it down to see if I can't get some light to shine through that. Um, you can see in here, in this area, some of the uh, condensation that is still left on there from being spritzed heavily with water yesterday as the water uh, was spritzed on there and then grabbed up around these forms, reticula reticulated up around the forms, and has left some really beautiful color. So I'm going to quickly... Put this in the bath, get it uh, finished up here, and see what it looks like. So, let's see. That's what it looks like before it takes a cleansing bath. And let's see what it looks like in there as this goes along. Again, I think I'm going to need to leave this in here for a good uh, five or, or so minutes. So um, I'll come back after that's done. Uh, again, it's the same process. Get this nice and clean, um, rinsed off, and um, put it in put it in here for a minute to um, oxidize it real quick 
and then rinse it off again and then let it dry. I'll come back and show it to you, uh, show you what it looks like uh, here in a few minutes. All right, uh, back uh, with you to finish up a couple of things, and uh, one of one of them is that uh, while I was waiting to do this stuff, the sun came out and developed this up, I think, nicely. We'll see what it looks like here in a second. Um, and uh, but I need to pull this last piece out of the bath and uh, show you what it looks like. And there it is. Pretty cool things happening there. And uh, I'll throw it in this bath and get that oxidation to happen a little bit more and some of those dark valued cyans to come out. I am, uh, let's see what this does here. Now, you can see a little bit of what that looks like before I start to wash it. And there we go. And with this in that bath, you want me to turn this a little bit, you can immediately start to see um, the uh, fun stuff happening there. Um, when I haven't left it out for 24 hours with a bunch of water on it, um, it starts to develop relatively quickly. So, um, I'll wash this off some, and then uh, watch that turn that lovely cyan color. Back with you in a second. Okay, I took the the last uh, piece out and uh, set it out to dry back there, and uh, this one is ready to go into the the second peroxide bath. Remember, that's just a little bit of peroxide. It's not pure peroxide by any means. Um, you can see it's turned cyan, um, and so there we go. And let's see what it does in here. That's darken up pretty quick, or relatively quick. Now, um, these things will finish themselves off over the next 24 hours as the, uh, the chemicals set and finish their oxidation process. So what you see here isn't exactly what they're going to look like, but um, they'll come out, uh, I think, quite beautiful anyway. Pretty happy with what I see. Let's take a look and see what some of these uh, textures did on this. Okay, so let's see here. Here is that wasp nest down there, and that's really cool. I'm definitely going to go hunt some more wasp nests. This is the, the negative shape of that um, wasp. And really interestingly, I did not expect this internal dynamics to happen um, with the, that design on there because that's this is a negative space thing. I've got to think about how that worked a little bit more. These plant forms are, are really nice. The um, things that didn't show up was the bubble wrap, sadly. I'll give that another time or two, uh, trying that. Um, but the mesh there, that uh, screen. Oh, get it in front of the camera here. The screen did work. And here is that, that bit I'm talking about on this. Uh, apologies for the way that just ended. I guess my phone ran out of storage space for, uh, for that. So didn't miss much. Um, just a, uh, a, a few more seconds of wrapping up and then a, uh, a little bit of a goodbye. I hope that you all get a chance to try this again. This is a super inexpensive, super easy, super fun thing to do. Um, it's great to do with kids. Um, it's great to do for gifts and a um, nice way to spend some time with our uh, home social isolation. Hope you're all doing well. Stay kind. Keep in touch. Bye.